In today's video, I'm going to show you some really simple things that you can do to fall in love with your home. I'm doing this because recently Joe and I looked at another house. We've thought about moving and putting in an offer. It didn't happen, but it really got us thinking about all the things we would have to do to put this house on the market. All the little scuffed up paint and projects that are left undone and things we would do to make this house more appealing. Why are we waiting? Why am I not doing those things now for us to enjoy? And I think this is something you can probably relate to too. So for the next month, we're gonna do a fall in love with your home series. And in today's video, I'm starting with the easiest and simplest things you can do. I definitely recommend if you want to love your home that you DIY something. And I know this can seem really overwhelming, especially if you're not a DIYer or a crafter, but doing something as simple as putting some dollar store stuff in a vase or making a little centerpiece, even putting candles in a, in a hurricane glass, doing a wreath. These are small little DIY projects that you can do that honestly, make you proud of yourself. I'm gonna make a little centerpiece today. I have a bunch of stuff from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna throw it in this box with some floral foam and I'm just gonna have fun with it. I feel like it's an act of love for your home. So you're not looking at the same space all the time, the same colors. It's like giving your home a hug. I don't like being on my own. I could use someone to hold, and I've been trying to fill the void. When I thought about selling this house, the first thing I thought of was all the chipped paint, especially in this downstairs bathroom. The vanity paint had chipped off. This has been painted a really long time ago, right over the tile. It was peeling. It just was drab, and I knew I had to update it. The truth was, I had all the paint already, so this is something that cost me absolutely nothing. It didn't take a lot of time. In a few hours, I was able to paint both the walls and the tile, paint the vanity, and completely freshen up this space without spending any money at all. Why was I putting it off? Do you have projects in your home that you're also putting off? Things that maybe don't even cost you anything at all. Why not do that for yourself today? I also just treated myself to a new shower curtain, some new towels, and just freshened up the space for under $50. I'm like, falling in love with this old bathroom all over again. And I know there's projects in your home that can make you feel exactly the same way. A simple thing you could do to fall in love with your home is just treat yourself and your home to something small. Why do we have no problem getting takeout or buying our kids a new toy, but the thought of buying maybe a new decorative pillow or a new shower curtain or a new comforter for our bed can feel like a waste. I want you to give yourself permission to treat yourself and your home to something new, something small. Maybe a pop of color for your living room in the way of a throw pillow or a centerpiece or a soft new throw. It's okay to treat yourself because you're gonna fall in love with your home a little bit more when you do something as simple as adding a small new thing. Even if you don't decorate your home for fall, this isn't what this is about. It's about imagining you're gonna sell your house and think about all the things that you would want or have to do in order to make your home more appealing to potential buyers. Why are we waiting to do that for someone else? What are little things we can do to love our home right now? The rest of September, every week, I'm gonna have another little update that we can do together so we can fall in love with our home this fall. If you like this video and you wanna follow along in all of September to fall in love with your home again, hit this like button and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell thing for reasons I'm not sure, but YouTube says it's important. Thank you so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So I have a little story for you. I didn't think this was a big deal. Joe seemed to think that this was the most ridiculous thing he had ever heard. So 
You will be the judge if you think this is maybe extremely dumb or a totally normal mom thing to do. So Milo got invited to his very first sleepover at his best friend's house down the road. And it was sort of like a last minute thing. So he quickly gathered things and he went down the road and had a sleepover. But at around 1130 at night, he started texting me that he was homesick. He was really upset and he wanted to come home. So I asked him to FaceTime me. I left the room while we were watching a movie and FaceTimed him and he was crying and he was embarrassed. The parents were asleep. His friend was asleep. He didn't want to wake them. So I was like, it's okay, I'll be right there. And you can just come, come out the front door and come home. But when I showed up at their house, I realized they probably shouldn't go out the front door because I didn't want someone to break into their house. So I told Milo to go to the back door. So under the cover of darkness, I snuck into their backyard and snuck my son out the back door came home, tucked him into bed, went back in the bedroom, and Joe said, so what did his parents say? And I was like, they're sleeping. So I just sent them a text message. <laughs> and Joe said, um, what if they wake up and don't get your text and think that Milo's gone? And I hope they call the police, Cass, because that was irresponsible. And then I was like, what? Is that irresponsible? He's like, yeah, you wake up the parents and let them know you're taking your son home like a normal human. But I wanted to be polite and not wake them. And then I said, but it's okay. I went out the back door so that the front door wasn't unlocked. And then you know what Joe said? He said, most burglars go in the back door. Way to go, Joe. So now I'm panicking that their back door is unlocked. So I call them repeatedly and they're not answering. Then I tried to convince Milo to sneak back in the house. I was going to get him snuck back in the house. But at this point, it's almost one in the morning and Joe has put his foot down. Absolutely, without a doubt, we are not sneaking Milo back in like a ninja. So I keep calling and then I'm about to go. I'm literally freaking and drive back and just bang on all their doors and windows. I asked Milo where they're bed master bedroom was. Joe thought it was because I was gonna sneak in their house and like wake them up. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. I was gonna knock on their bedroom window really loudly so I didn't wake up the kids. Maybe that was also weird. But anyways, finally the mom called me back. So here's how this conversation goes, okay? Hi, I just got your call. Is everything okay? Your back door's unlocked. And then she was like, what? And I was like, your back door's unlocked. I'm really, really concerned for your safety. And she was very confused. She's like, I'm confused. My back door's unlocked. I was like, it's okay. I snuck Milo out. We're fine. Just please lock your, your back door. And that's when she realized that Milo was not in her house. She was half asleep. I'm a crazy person. And I should have just called in the first place. Anyways, it all worked out. Milo will probably never have a sleepover ever again. But let me know in the comments below if you also think that that is maybe a nice thing to do or weird. I thought I was being nice not waking them up. Joe seems to think it's really weird. I'll see you guys next time.